the big picture. Abraham wants a bride for his son, so he sends Eliezer to, to find her. The big picture in the New Testament. God sent the Holy Spirit to find a bride for his son, and he didn't come empty-handed. The camels of heaven came down on the day of Pentecost, and God gave gifts to men and to his church. That's the typology of this story. So that I want to come into the material side, and then later come into the spiritual side. But the material side is ten camels were sent to get a bride. And when God is dealing with his church, he doesn't come empty-handed. He's coming to you with material blessing. He's coming to you with spiritual blessing. He is the blesser of everything that we have. I want you to get the idea. I, I want you to see the main thought uh, of what I'm talking about. And uh, then I will break it down. So I'm going to break it down now for you. So we go to the text. In chapter 24. Verse 1. And Abraham was old. Was stricken years. But you know, that's funny. After his wife died, who lived for 127 years, Sarah, buried her, he married again when he was 149 years old. And he had 12 sons and lived to be 175. So if any one of you think you're old, think again. Amen. You're not old. Tell yourself you're not old. Because God can make you live as long as He wants you to live. Right. Amen. There is no age limit to God. I believe that I'm going to live very long. Amen. I really believe that. Yeah. I don't think my time is now. Amen. I think my ministry has just begun. Amen. I'm a Amen. babe in Christ still. I have a lot of growing to do. I have a lot of maturing to do. Take 
a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites. Do not marry my son to an ungodly woman. Amen. 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 Hear me, some of you have girlfriends and boyfriends that are not Christians. And you are telling yourself, you know, they're gonna they're gonna get she they're gonna come to church and they're gonna get saved. Listen, I heard that story so many times. And I have seen that counsel young people not to do it. I said, Pastor, pray for us now. We love each other and love will cover it. Listen, let me tell you, after a year or two, love goes through the window, reality strikes. Division hits the family. Amen. The Bible tells you clearly, be not unequally yoked. Right. You are only inviting trouble into your marriage yeah. and into your future. Yeah. And so it starts here. Yeah. Do not get my son an uncivilized, unsafe woman. Find a woman of God and we will show you how you will find that. Right. Because if you want to be blessed, Find a mate, a partner who loves Jesus the Amen. same way you do. Amen. Can I hear you? Amen. And you parents, don't tell your children, hey, you're old enough to do what you want to do. Yeah. You'll be held liable to give them proper advice. They don't have to take your advice, but you give them proper Amen. advice. Amen. You tell them that what is right from what is wrong, because sometimes yeah. their hearts uh, overcome their heads. Yes. And you gotta love both with head and heart. Amen. In other words, you gotta love smart. Yes. <laughs> love is blind. Who said that? Amen. That is true. Hmm. You still okay with me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, let's go on then. <laughs> so, after making him swear, he took ten camels. And he loaded them up with silver and gold and precious things and garments and everything to impress this young lady uh, when he finds her. Now, watch this truth. So apart from don't marry in a hurry, except both of you know how to cook curry, <laughs> or something in common, you'll only bury your future in pain and compromise. Amen. After he made that very clear to him, he said, go and look for a wife, go to my family, my, my kin's people, and uh, find them. So, when he came in verse 10, he took 10 camels, of his master, loaded them up well, he arose, went to Mesopotamia, the city of Nahal. And he made his camels to bow down. Rather, he made his camels to kneel down. Amen. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you. Hear me right. When God blesses you with super abundance, when your camel that is loaded, comes away. Teach your blessing to kneel down before God. Amen. Do not make your blessing something to worship, but take what God has blessed you, bring it to the altar, yeah. cause it to kneel, and make God the source of your blessing. Amen. Make your camel kneel. Yes. Yes. Even your camel should learn to pray. Amen. Even your blessing should learn to say thank you, God. Amen. And so, he went, the camels knelt down by the city, by a well of water, at the time of evening <coughs> when women would come to draw water. He picked the right time. Amen. He knew that in the middle of the day, the men would come and they would hug the well. In the evening time, the women would come and they would draw water from the well and they would give to their cows. And so, she was watering uh, the trough and, and, and taking care of her own camel. And uh, Eliezer said, 
verse 12, and he said, O oh Lord, now Eliezer is praying to the God of Abraham. And he said, O oh Lord, God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. You hear the point here, that prayer on your journey equals success. As you go, even when you don't know where you're going, even you don't know what to expect, pray. Pray as you go, and God will hear your prayer. I will show you right now, just now, that verse 15, it came to pass before he had done speaking, before he had even finished preaching, a praying God answered his prayer. God is so ready. God bless you. God is so wanting to prosper you. He is going to hear you. Because Abraham said, the Lord before whom I have walked faithfully will send his angel with you and make your journey a success. Your journey in life is going to be successful as you pray, as you go along. Can I hear an amen? God angel is going before you to make a way and to prepare a path for your success. Thank you, Jesus. That's the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Prayer on your journey equals success. Make your candles kneel because it's time to unload. Amen. So the old way of doing things was to make a fleece. So Eliezer made a fleece. He said, God, listen. I'm going to stand here, verse 13, before I stand here by the well of water. It's all happening by the well. I want you to get that point up. I'll apply that in a minute. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming to draw water. Let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, watch this now, he's making a, he's wanting uh, a sign from God and he's making clear, uh, clear request. When I say to her, let down that pitcher, I pray thee that I may drink, and she shall say, drink. <clears throat> And I will give camels drink also. Now he's asking for a lot. He, uh, he's asking for a woman who has no interference with men at the well. He's asking her for a drink which they should not communicate with the woman. He's asking the woman pour water out for his camel. That's a lot of water too. Camels drink a lot. I want you to know that. At least nine gallons they can hold at a time. Wow. And so he's, he's asking for a lot of tough things. And... When I ask, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee that I may drink, and she shall say, drink. Now he's putting words in the, man's, in the woman's mouth and asking God to do that. When she shall say, drink, and I will give your camel drink, let the same be the one that you have appointed for your servant Isaac. Therefore shall I know that you have shown kindness unto my master. He has made it really tough for God. Yeah, he, he's, he's asking a lot. Uh, he's putting a fleece. If these things happen, then I will know for a surety that that's the woman you have chosen for my master. Let me tell you something. It's okay to make fleece with God. Gideon did it and it worked. Many people did it and it worked. And, and sometimes I have had to make fleece with God because when I am not sure about certain things, I will say, Lord, if this is your will, let this, if it is, this is your will, let this happen and let that happen and let that happen so that it can confirm to me that I'm walking in your will. Yeah. I need confirmation sometimes because I can't trust this. I can't trust my dreams sometimes. I can't trust my senses sometimes. I can't trust myself. I want God to send confirmation. And it's okay to ask God for something to confirm His will in your life. 
don't live hocus pocus. You can talk to God and God will show you exactly and give you exactly what you ask for. Can I hear an amen? amen. amen. Hallelujah. So, verse 15, it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rebecca came out, one who was born to Bethuel and so forth. Verse 16, Verse 15, rather. While he was praying, he hear, hear the truth. Praying the will of God can make things happen faster than you can ask. Amen. Because God is so ready to bless you. God, God, when you're in line with God's will, you don't have to force the prayer. You don't have to pray long, 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 long. God is just waiting right there to bless you amen. as long as you are in line with God's will. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. Verse 16. And the damsel was very fair to look upon a virgin. Neither any man had known her. Hey, 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 hey. Amen. Three things you can't find in Washington. <laughs> An honest man, a poor man, and the rest is this one. <laughs> you know that we had a joke for the Christmas story? At the Washington, they could find, they wanted to make it fresh, and they could find two things they couldn't find. They couldn't find wise men, but they had a lot of donkeys. <laughs> and they're still looking for a virgin. <laughs> My point is this. Good women are still available. Amen. Amen. That's right. Pure virgins are still around. Yeah. You just have to pray Amen. and ask God to give you the best of the rest. Amen. And God will honor you. Oh, yeah. And hear me, young ladies. Keep yourself pure. Amen. Don't experiment. That's right. That's right. Wait for the one God has for you. Yeah. That you will honor your marriage bed. It will be undefiled and you will give
He asked her why. He said, she said, I couldn't find the switch. <laughs> so this generation doesn't know what we know. We know about Fireside, Chula Side, oh, yeah. Roti of Top Tower, and <laughs> now it's pizzas. <laughs> and firewood. <laughs> I don't mind that. But when, when, you're, when you're looking for a girl, don't just look for a beautiful face. Right, amen. And girls, when you're looking for a guy, handsome is as handsome does. Amen. Yeah. Right. Take your time, pray, and speak right. Amen. 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 Yeah. Now, this is what the point I really want you to get. I want you to sow into your future. And how do you do that? It came when she hasted and emptied. She watered his camel. The man wondering and held his peace whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. It came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring and half shekel weight, that's a, a big piece. Two bracelets for her hands. Ten shekels weight of gold. That's, that's real big bangles. And gave it to her and said, Whose daughter are you? Because of her kindness to a stranger, she sowed into her future. Amen. Here, you need to do good whether you are promised a reward or not. Amen. Amen. Because the good you do today will come back to bless you tomorrow. Amen. So begin to do good and sow into your future. Every good deed done, God is watching. Hey, God keeps the books. God does not forget. And the works that you have done in helping poor people and stretching your hand when you didn't have enough for yourself and when you were making sacrifices that God was pleased with, God has recorded it and is going to multiply it back to you a hundredfold if you believe that. When you say amen. You don't know whose candle you are sowing uh, water. You don't know who you are a blessing and how they are going to return and bless that because a great inheritance awaits you. I'm almost finished. I say that many times. Verse 26, and the man bowed down and worshipped God. He bowed down and worshipped God. He bowed down and worshipped God. When God blesses you, when God hears your prayer, when your mission is successful. The time of asking is past. And the time of praying is over. The blessing has come. So after I'm finished preaching, we're going to go into a few songs of worship. And we are going to bow down and we are going to praise God and we are going to worship Him in faith, believing that my camel is coming. That God has some big, huge blessing. There shall be plenty, plenty in 2020, yeah. and a camel with your name yeah. is coming. Yeah. Be ready to water your camel. Be ready to unlock your camel. Be ready to make your camel kneel down and be ready to give God praise. It's all happening in the well. We sang it as well. With my soul. If you live at the well of living waters, if you draw from that well, not only your soul's well will never run dry, but everything will work up right for you because you're drinking from the right source. When you drink from heaven's well, your body will be well. Your soul will be well. Yes. Your spirit will be well. Yes. Your finances will be well. Yes. Your cameos will be well. Yes. Your mission will be well. Yes. Everything will be well because... Say it. You shall...
shall prosper in all your ways. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, the wells, the Elam. Long story short, and whatsoever he does, it shall prosper. Tell your neighbor, push him up, prophesy to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you will prosper. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will increase you. The Lord will give you everything that he has for you. God's will ensures my success in accordance with his plan, not mine. I know the plans I have for you, says God. Plans to prosper you. Plans not to hurt you, but plans to give you more and more and more. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen, amen, amen. God cannot lie. You're going to receive everything God has promised you. I'll just read some, some quotes here and I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping this up here. The generous will prosper. Amen. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. That's what happened to Rebecca. Taking time out to, to water somebody else's camel which she didn't know. She later was refreshed. The purpose of faith isn't to secure wealth and health, but to remind ourselves that in Jesus Christ, God has already given us everything. Amen. Amen. You just have to be by the well. Amen. You just have to wait by the well. It's coming your way, but you've got to be living by the living well of living waters. Yes. You've got to come to church. Yes. You can't come once in three months, you're not a quarterly Christian. You're the seven days Christian. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So therefore, you never know. As long as you by the well, expect something good to happen to you. How good? This good. <laughs> That's not a shocker to God. Amen. Why can't you believe? Amen. You can believe God for five hundred dollars, and you can't believe God for that. Come on, it's the same thing. It's the same God. He is ever. I tell you the truth. You will get only what you expect. Yes. All right. You will get only what you believe for. Amen. And if you have faith for 500, God bless you. Amen. My faith is gone higher up. Amen. My faith is, you know, long time ago, I preached a sermon when they just came out with extra fries and large drinks. They say supersize it. You remember that? Yeah. I preached a sermon once and Lord supersize it. Because God don't want you with your little cup. He wants to supersize it. Then he says, supersize my blessing, Lord. Supersize it, Lord. Come on, talk to me. Talk to me. I want faith in response. Amen. Amen. So, the camel went to her, loaded, and when it came back to Isaac, it came back with a blessing money couldn't buy. 
Amen. Came back with a woman who would become one of the matriarchs. Yes. One who would give birth yes. to two sons. Yes, Jacob would become yes. the father of 12 nations. My God. And so the Bible said she covered her face when she saw him in the field. Woman is good to cover up. Yes. 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 Keep your mystery. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> because you know the truth. She covered herself, the Bible says. Verse 65, and she said unto the servant, What man is that in the field coming to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done, and Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife. And he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. A woman can give you comfort. Yes. A man can give you assurance of peace. Yes. That's what marriage is all about. Yes. But when you bring the camel into the picture, it makes it even better. Amen. Amen. Because you need, you need things to keep your marriage going. Amen. You need money for your family. Amen. You need money to buy this and that. Yes. Good stuff. Amen. Good things. Uh, reasonable things. And if God bless you with abundance, go ahead. Amen. Don't let anybody envy you. I, I made this statement once, I'm going to make it again. I am walking with a chair. From now on, I'm walking with a chair. Because when I get blessed, some people will be too weak to stand up. <laughs> so I'll give them a chair. I'll sit down. Because 